Young Depression, Young Depression, the anime. 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 I feel like I don't say this enough, so here is a pleasant reminder that I do not like Deadpool. So keep that in mind before you really start this video and either don't watch it, leave a dislike, hell, even unsubscribe from the channel if this news is too much for you because even though he's not in this series, his influence is and it definitely has impacted my opinions about it. Still here? All right, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this. I'll be honest with you readers, it took me a minute to get into Marvel's Hitmonkey. Sure, I was intrigued at the concept of a monkey assassin when I saw the trailers for the show online, let alone that it was already a Marvel property. I was also surprised to learn that it was one of the last projects to come out of Marvel Television that was completed before it was absorbed by Marvel Studios, previously ran by outed racist Jeff Loeb. So I continued with the 10 episode season, albeit in sessions of five, doing everything in my power not to tap out after episode three. Because while the show does have its moments when it decides to focus on the right things regarding the tale of revenge it's trying to tell, getting there was a bit of a struggle for me. <laughs> Because Deadpool bias aside, there were definitely a few things both within its narrative and that were presented over the course of the show that rubbed me the wrong way. Things that if properly fixed and slash or adjusted would have actually pumped up my enjoyability factor for the show. You know, other than the fact that a non-genetically enhanced feral monkey is out assassinating people, that part I'm fine with, that can stay. But out of the gripes I gained from the show, there's one that definitely annoyed me to the point where I came close to leaving the show alone multiple times. And I'll give you a hint. It's exactly what you think it is. Now, before I continue, I have to warn you that this video will contain spoilers for Marvel's Hitmonkey. So if you want to watch this show for yourself, before you watch me talk about it so that my opinions aren't the only ones first and foremost present in your mind when you do, I suggest you head to Hulu to do so before continuing on with my spiel. Cool? Cool. So the first gripe I have with the show is the one that I think, because of everything that happened in the house, couldn't really be helped. And that one is the overall quality of the animation. Watching it play out on the show was very interesting because I found it incredibly hard to tell at times whether it wanted the animation to flow of something like the boondocks from season two onward, or if it was aiming for more of an Archer slash Chosen slash Frisky Dingo vibe. Because of it, there's this very weird hybrid of stagnation and fluidity in a lot of its scenes that works sometimes, but doesn't most of the time. Not in the fight scenes though, the fight scenes were pretty much 80% fluid throughout. The reason why I believe that this is one of those negatives about the show that couldn't be helped is because this show was planned during Marvel Television's absorption into Marvel Studios. And out of all the upcoming animated projects Marvel Television were planning, only Hitmonkey <laughs> and Patton Oswalt's MODOK made the green light. And you already know how I feel about MODOK. <laughs> So with the show surviving the transition, I'm sure cuts and budget restrictions were also implemented, since Marvel Studios had their own MCU-related stuff to fund. At least, that's what I hopefully assume is the reason why the animation is the way it is in the show. Otherwise... Hmm. However, because of said assumption, there is a problem that takes higher priority in Hitmonkey that, both as a storyteller and a lover of authenticity, absolutely 
irritated me watching the show. And that's the Americanization of Japan. No, I'm not talking about the fact that every Japanese person in Tokyo speaks perfect English in the show. Although that is definitely a talking point we need to eventually have about America's disinterest in subtitles. I'm talking about how outside of a few trademark things a lot of people know to associate Japan with, everything else is just American set dressing because the show's writers and showrunners couldn't be bothered to do proper research on the machinations of day-to-day -day life in Tokyo that they constantly present in the show. For example, the Tokyo police officers depicted in Hip Monkey are the most NYPD-ass cops I've ever seen. <laughs> no, seriously, the banter between the cops in this show feels more like how police operate in America than Japan. Everything from how briefings work to the I don't need a partner trope between Detective Ito and Rookie Haluka. Another example is how the Yakuza are depicted and how they act and look like they're members of the American Mafia. <laughs> and this sense of Americanization even affects the very locations used in the show. Because why is there an American prison in Japan? Why is there a high security American prison in Japan? When I see another country in American media depicted like this, especially another country that has a very heavy influence in pop culture, it tells me one of two things. Either the writing team consists of so much white privilege that they can't be bothered to depict the lifestyles appropriate to the culture they're depicting because they assume the similarities and how it works in America in comparison are accurate, or they care more about depicting the stuff that Western audiences already find cool about the real life history and machinations of the culture that made their way to America, like martial arts, Yakuza, ninjas, samurai, and katanas. So, considering that Hip Monkey showrunners are Will Speck and Josh Jordan, two white guys who got put on the map for directing the comedy Blaze of Glory, and being known for comedy soon afterwards for directing The Switch and Office Christmas Party, I wouldn't be surprised if what we got in Hip Monkey was a result of a bit of column A and a bit of column B. And it's in that focus of comedy that brings me to my main problem with Hit Monkey. Because while the consistency of the animation may or may not have been the result of Marvel Television getting the short end of the stick because of company shifts and the depiction of Japan being relatively irritating, the one thing that kept testing my patience regarding whether or not I was going to stop watching this show was Bryce. So not only was Bryce a mess, and yes, I understand that's the point, let me finish. But after taking a peek behind the curtain, I had the unfortunate revelation that he could have been a different type of mess, a more dynamic type of mess. A kind of mess that, in my opinion, would have made him worthy of the backstory and road to redemption that the animated series thought to give him. What do I mean by that? Well, let's dissect Bryce as he's known in the show. When we're first introduced to Bryce, he's incredibly insufferable, constantly talking the ear off his driver and drinking himself into countless stupors. It was clear the type of person the show was painting Bryce out to be. So by the time he kills Ken Takahala and is double-crossed by the Banzai Master and is killed by his soldiers after being treated by the snow monkeys that took him in, it's very hard for someone to feel sorry for him, especially me. From the 20 minute window we're introduced to Bryce and witness his death, there's really nothing interesting about his character other than that he's really good at killing people and being an asshole and the former doesn't really account for much because it's completely overshadowed by the latter. So when I saw Bryce die after Hip Monkey kills the guys who murdered his tribe, I felt pretty indifferent. 
As far as I knew, this guy and Hitmonkey's distrust of him upon watching him train gets the idea about what he needs to do in order to go about carrying out his vengeance. An Uncle Ben to Hitmonkey's Peter Parker, even though his tribe should technically be his Uncle Ben. Then we find out that Bryce became spiritually bound to Hitmonkey as a ghost. And according to Stick, who's a Japanese monk in this universe, in order for him to properly ascend to his respective afterlife, he has to rip the seed of evil from a barren field where nothing can truly grow until then. So now I have to deal with a full 10 episodes of Bryce's snark, commentary, and forced character development because of course he has no clue or motivations to realize that the barren field is himself. I say forced, because over the course of the season, the show does everything it can do in order to convince you that not only is Bryce capable of said development and accomplishing said mission to ascend, but that he's also worthy of said redemption arc. And every time the show tried to deliver that belief of capability and worthiness, at least to me, it fucking failed. You wanna know why it failed? Because animated series Bryce is designed to be so obnoxious, so self-entitled, and so self-righteous in his actions that every scenario that presents itself to him over the course of the first four-fifths of the series just goes immediately over his head and he barely takes anything away from the experiences. So much so that writer for episode seven of the show, Ken Kobayashi, who, let's just be honest here, is probably one of the only non-white writers on the show, summed it up pretty nicely with the second use of stick in the season. Demons are talkative, arrogant, and entitled. But in his case, he may just be American. Now the reason why I said that actual work on animated Bribe's character didn't really start until the final fifth of the season is because we don't get a proper peek at his upbringing and what drove him to become an assassin until episode eight, when he's separated from Hitmonkey via Salt Circle and is forced to be alone with his thoughts the multiple men his mom dated, the one that ended up with a problematic past that would later catch up with him, where he learned the saying he told Hitmonkey when he was watching Bryce in the mountains, and why he abandoned his own family. But did this change my mind about animated Bryce? No, <laughs> not at all. If anything, this just made me hate this depiction of him even more. Because one, you had all this time for him to associate this backstory you gave him with how he lived, how he died, and how he progressed over the course of the series in order to get us to better emphasize with him. And instead, you chose to continue depicting him as this weird personality hybrid of Ryan Reynolds and Will Arnett. And two, it shouldn't have taken you eight out of 10 episodes to get me to care about this asshole if he's the character you're sought out to try and pinpoint his development via the one that the show is named after. This version of Bryce is so undeserving of not just the repeated chances the show gives him for proper character development, but also of both his origin and the quickly paced realization he received in the two-part finale. And it makes the majority of the show absolutely unwatchable for me. But there is a version of Bryce that does deserve everything the show tries to get us to believe the animated version deserves. And that's the version of Bryce that's depicted in the actual Marvel comics. <laughs> now, I understand that most of the scenarios presented in this season are original ideas, due to the limitations in how much source material there was in Hitmonkey's comic appearances to adapt on screen. All they really had to work with is a digital one-shot, a three-issue story arc in Deadpool, and a three-issue limited series. But even in the seven comics Hitmonkey has been the focus of, 
Bryce is not only present, but his personality is incredibly different from how he's depicted in the animated series. Bryce in the comics is cold, calculating, almost emotionless, both before and after his death when he's spiritually connected to Hitmonkey. And with his sociopathic and manipulative nature, he truly encapsulates the arc that animated Bryce goes on and what his end goal is supposed to be. Because Comic Bryce is a barren field where nothing can grow. He is the seed of evil that needs to be removed. And if you give Comic Bryce animated Bryce's origin regarding why he's the way that he is, not only would the events over the course of the show's entirety actually affect him in order for it to have the desired effect on the audience that watches Hitmonkey, but in having this version of Bryce realize that passing down this behavior of his to a violent prone snow monkey in order to enact his vengeance is doing nothing but perpetuate a history of violence that started with him, it makes his realization responsible for his ascension all the more rewarding. Instead, for the sake of making the show an action comedy, Animated Bryce is yet another selfish, middle-aged white man with BoJack Horseman levels of self-destruction capabilities and is constantly denying his problems until he's forced to confront them directly. Now, considering the fact that I was able to successfully finish Hitmonkey, I think it's safe to say that despite my nitpicks, I was able to gather some enjoyment from it. And I do not want any of my complaints about the show to affect your decision whether or not to watch it. But considering that I was able to find these three main things incredibly hard to watch and enjoy the show from beginning to end, that means that there is a good chance that others might have come to the same conclusion as well. And for those like me, I present to you this video in order to show you that you are not alone. But I digress readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comment section below what you thought of Marvel's Hitmonkey if you've seen it. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class a show that you've seen that you've had one or two problems with that if addressed and fixed would have made the show 10 times more enjoyable for you immediately. And yes, don't worry, saying X show would have been better if they moved all the Caucasians to the back is an acceptable answer. Honestly, it looks better already. Whichever questions you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.